morning, everybody. What do you think you just heard? That was the sound of the dawn chorus. And at the moment, I'm waking up to that sound every single morning because I'm deliberately sleeping with my windows wide open so I can hear that coming through the window every morning. So last week I spoke to you about International Dance Day, which takes place at the end of April. And today I'm going to talk to you about another special day that this year takes place on the 3rd of May, Sunday the 3rd of May, because it is International Dawn Chorus Day on the 3rd of May. It actually takes place on the first Sunday each year in May. Um, and it is a celebration of nature's greatest symphony. So a symphony is an elaborate musical composition for a full orchestra, which I think is a brilliant description of the dawn chorus because it sounds as if every bird is out there just singing at the top of its voice. So when I heard about International Dawn Chorus Day that I'd never heard of before, I decided to have a little look into it and to, to find out a little bit more. And this is what I learned. So it is connected with um, territory and raising chicks. And it all happens about an hour before sunrise. And at this time of the day, it is too dark for the birds to search for food, but it is also too dark for them to be spotted by predators and hunted. There's less background noise, so the air is really still and the sound carries for a greater distance. It's a phenomenon that starts at the start of a new day and it's most noticeable in spring. So in the UK, it tends to start about March time and it reaches its peak in May, which also coincides with the International Dawn Chorus Day. Birds can sing at any time of the day, but during the Dawn Chorus, their songs are often louder, livelier and more frequent. It can start as early as 4am and can last for several hours. Now, this is an amazing thing that I didn't know and I learned about it as I was reading up on the Dawn Chorus, that there is a sequence to it. So certain birds go at certain times. So robins, blackbirds and thrushes start first, which may be because they have biggish eyes to see in the dark and because they like to look for worms. But after a while, all the others join in. So this is the order that I found out about. So blackbirds start off, then it's robins and wrens, then a tawny owl, a chaffinch, pheasants, warblers, song thrush, green finch, dunnock, and then the goldfinch. So while I was researching up on the dawn chorus, I came upon this really beautiful write-up of someone else's experience of these precious early morning symphonies. And I thought I'd read it to you. So it's not my work, it's somebody else's, but it's really very lovely. So sit back and try and imagine, try and picture what it is that I'm going to read to you. So it's half past four in the morning and the sun is less than a suggestion beyond the eastern horizon. A deep blue ribbon crowning the distant trees. I'm standing on the dew drenched grass and before me lies a lake, a silver mirror reflecting the pre-dawn sky, dotted with the silhouettes of sleeping ducks. Even at this early hour, as much of the wild world slumbers, the still air is far from silent. The nasal laughter of lesser black-backed gulls fills the morning, as if seeking to provoke a reaction from the slowly wakening songbirds. Soon, the first stirrings of the morning symphony can be heard. Blackbirds and robins sing sweetly from the tangled brambles, but the clear voice of the song thrush rings loudest. Two males sing against each other, vying for vocal dominance. Each sings with such variety, he sounds like several birds. Bold phrases repeated in threes, fours and even fives, spurred to new heights by the competition. As the glittering stars disappear and the sky fades from black to a deep blue-grey, the rumbling purr of the wood pigeon joins the chorus, interrupted briefly by the haunting call of a tawny owl. Just after five o'clock, the first chiff-chaff finds his voice, tentative at first, but quickly growing in confidence. 
he proclaims his name from a tall strand of willows. Chiff, chaff, chiff, chaff. The eastern horizon is now a blaze of orange, colour flooding into the brightening sky, adding new texture as a blanket of clouds is rendered in pastel light. Amongst the growing symphony, the soft voice of the dunnock is almost lost, a melodic ripple, every bit as beautiful as the more celebrated song of the robin. It's sunrise, before the first black cat begins to warm up his voice, Starting as a scratchy, wavering mumble, his voice soon rises to the crystal clarity of a flute. Within minutes, his challenge is met, other males joining in and carrying the chorus to new and wondrous heights, a dozen species greeting the day in unison. As the sun brightens and the shadows retreat, the dawn chorus gradually fades, the early singers slipping off to find some hard-earned breakfast. In spring, the song never dies out completely as birds sing throughout the day, staking claim to territories and demonstrating their prowess to passing females. But these daylight serenades never reach the magical crescendo of those precious moments before dawn. Isn't that beautiful? So thinking so much about birds and the dawn chorus reminded me of two of my favourite Bible verses that are connected to birds. Once from the Old Testament and once from the New Testament. So from Isaiah, which is in the Old Testament. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I love those images. So if you're feeling weary, you can rise up with wings like eagles. And that reminds me a little bit of the strong wings of the butterfly that we were talking about and um, that struggle to come out of the cocoon. And then from the New Testament, I absolutely love this verse. And this is in Matthew. It says, look at the birds of the air. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly father feeds those birds. And you know that you are worth much more to him than the birds. Isn't that wonderful to think that God values us so much and finds us to be worthy? I sometimes think of that verse when I need a little bit of cheering up. So one of the things that I've been thinking about during the, the past few weeks is how much I love, love the noise of our school. In the first couple of weeks of lockdown, I kept thinking mainly of your lovely faces and your smiles and how much I actually miss seeing you here in school. But over the past couple of weeks, it's changed a little bit. And I realise that now I'm missing hearing you more than ever. I miss hearing you all clumping up and down the stairs just outside my office here. I miss you shouting and calling to each other from the playground and the field. I miss a break time when you come and thump on the door and say, Miss Patterson, we've got something to tell you or to show you. I miss hearing you singing and I miss hearing you chatter as you're lining up for things. I miss the, the noise of the dining room while you're all eating and chattering together. I miss your glorious noise. That's a phrase that keeps coming to me, glorious noise. So when I've been thinking of the dawn chorus, I also think of your chorus and it makes me smile and look forward even more to the days when we're all back together again. So have a great week. I hope your lessons go really well and that you enjoy your learning. If you do wake up early one morning, open those windows, lie back in bed and listen to the beauty of the dawn chorus.